Thank you, Lizmits, for joining us on our podcast episode today. Uh, today we have a special guest with us, Dr. L. S. Shashidara from uh, the director of NCBS with us today. Dr. Shashidara, first of all, thanks a lot for joining us today. Uh, your thanks association, for this opportunity. your association with Sarah and participation in our events has a long history. And I personally know it would take a lot, entire podcast episode to just to hear about your career trajectory. But could you give our listeners a quick background about your career path, say from when and where you started your research career? Sure. Thank you very much. Um, I started uh, uh, as a geneticist and agriculture biologist, and I was a sort of researcher after my graduation at an agriculture university. Then I moved to PhD for my PhD to Cambridge University. After I came back, uh, you know the TFR at that time. Obviously, the key was the TFR. He gave me a job as a visiting fellow, and later I worked with Vijay at NCBS at Bangalore, and um, then I moved to CCMB Hyderabad, where I started my own lab as a developmental biologist. Then I was more interested in science education. Uh, at the same time while doing research as part of the capacity building so i moved to um isa pune when it was at the stage of setting it up it was a new institution meant for integrating uh, undergraduate education with high quality research and i was part of uh, building isa pune along with professor k n ganesh who was the director at that time and uh, that was the time i also got involved in multiple different uh topics and man you know and committees related to science policy capacity building internationalization of science and so forth and uh, so i was part of you know building india bioscience a project which is still running very strong and it is anchored by ncts here uh to as part of the community building exercise including the recruitment right at the same time, I, around in the mid-2015-16, Sai R Y was conceived uh, by Asim Ansari at uh, Wisconsin. And then he pulled me uh, as a co-organizer of some of the young investigator meetings that was organized at Chicago. And, uh, and then I uh, sort of also got interested in how to expand Indian scientific ecosystem to more to private universities. Yes, you all know the much of research happens in the government institutions in India, not so much from private organizations. But over the last few years, there is more private funding for research. At the same time, more and more private universities are doing research. I was involved in building research ecosystem in one such private university, Ashoka University, in near Delhi. And uh, after that, I'm here at NCBS as director. Thanks, thanks for the short and sweet answer, Dr. Sheshadara. Uh, so, as a director of NCBS, where do you envision NCBS heading in the future, say, the next 10 to 15 years in terms of areas of research focus? So, as you know, NCBS is the, the, uh, is the forefront of biology. And very interestingly, unlike most institutions in the world, NCBS, although it's a small research institution with about 40 faculty and 200 PhD students, it more than 200 PhD students, of course. Uh, it sort of works across the biology. What I meant is the faculty sort of look at biology at the one end of the spectrum at the molecular level and under the spectrum at the forest ecosystem. So that means biology is researched across the scale of its size and complexity. And NCBS has always been ahead of its time. Uh, not only in India and also just of the world, developing methodologies to address some of the basic biology problems, right? And with changing time, as the whole world is moving and the world is moving much, much faster uh, rate and science is progressing at much faster rate since particularly in the last you know, 20 years or so. And, and the climate change is the major focus of research uh, across the world. There are two aspects to this. One is what is the impact of climate change to the biosphere? And the second is while looking at what what kind of organisms you know adapt to climate change using very different mechanisms. Some fail to adapt, some adapt. You can also discover more in basic biology. And also there is more 
uh, emphasis on applied and translational biomedical research. Right. And also same thing with uh, biodiversity and ecology but more required for conservation mm -hmm. uh, you know, in the context of loss of biodiversity and forest ecosystem. Given all of these things, it's time NCBS uses its strength in fundamental science to address some of the real life problems, both applied and translational research, not ignoring basic science. And so it's an interesting balance between uh, fundamental science and applied and translational work. And this is the kind of you know direction NCPS is moving. Already a large number of scientists here are doing applied and basic science um, in the context of uh, aging, mental health, cancer, biodiversity, and conservation. And funding also is getting diversified because it's unlikely that you know, the future of funding will be only government. Mm -hmm. In India, diversification is already happening. So NCB is also attracting large amount of uh, philanthropic funding for research. So, so as you can see here, our future recruitment, particularly in the context of today's interview, uh, would be of those who think out of the box, work outside their comfort zone, and at the same time able to convince uh, general public, because all your philosophy funders are not specialists, and the value of your work so that you can attract non government uh, Thanks for that insight, Dr. Shashidara. So what kind of infrastructure facilities does NCBS currently have to aid in these research areas and like uh, what's in store for the future? Yeah, so uh, NCBS has set up some of the most advanced research facilities for, for biology research in the country. And there is nothing that is not there in NCBS, but it is there elsewhere in India, right? Mm -hmm. they don't, I'm not starting to sort of boast here, but we have more or less every piece of equipment that is required for research. We may not have them in sufficient number. More, for example, faculty join and require confocal microscope, we add more microscopes. Currently, we have you know sufficient for the existing number of faculty and the number of students who are using the facilities. So the from you know microscopy, including electron microscopy to all kinds of mass spectrophotometer sequencing uh, facilities. We uh, that's for more cell molecular biology, cell and molecular biology, and those who do field biology, we do have field stations uh, in certain selected parts of India, and we also rent out field stations as required by the faculty and their students. And very soon we are going to acquire another large piece of land, uh, forest land in which we are going to set up a field station so that more and more ecology and biodiversity work can be done mm -hmm. uh, with the help of our own facilities. In terms of financial support, uh, all recruits, new recruits will get a seed funding mm -hmm. and uh, so they can buy certain equipment that is you know, required for them but may not be in enough quantity or uh, uh, particular model of their choice may not be there in India in our institution and the second is um, to until they get their grant uh, to run the lab and and with the help of their students so both financially as well as with the existing facilities uh, this is one of the best places for any young researcher to initiate their her or his own research that's that's great to hear so you kind of touched this in one of the previous answers in terms of uh, what you're looking for in applicants but could you give us a few more details about the recruiting prospects for early career investigators at ncbs um are there any particular research areas that you are trying to recruit the uh, folks in? yeah so of course although uh, we um, don't have any specific focus in this research institution as i've already mentioned our researchers look at biology across different scales of size and complexity. But still, there are been certain focused areas in which we need to fill the gap. For example, we need more structural biologists, more neuroscience and uh, immunologists. We have very, very poor in presence of immunologists in, the, in this campus. And also, um, we are looking for more people who would be interested to study the impact of climate change 
on biodiversity or individual organisms aging mm-hmm. metabolism and health and other things so as you can see here uh, the kind of expertise that is required in these kind of work is also in evolutionary biology so people working on evolution will also be sought after by us cool so uh, given that most of our audience is actually the indian research diaspora abroad um like i think they would be interested in knowing that uh, if ncbs would be willing to host return to india fellowship uh, awardees like say ramalinga uh, somi fellowship or ramanujan fellowship so uh, you know ncbs uh, has its own uh, young scientist fellowship and uh, you know like uh, campus fellows or young investigator program and at the same time we do host uh, inspire faculty fellows mm-hmm. ramanujan ramanika swami we have not but ncbs works in a campus called blisk uh, blisk is bangalore life science cluster it's made up of four institutions ncbs in stem tics and ccam ccam is a incubation center so given this kind of an ecosystem there are multiple you know places where ramanika swami ramanujan fellows can join but we work collectively they can they have, they have access to all the facilities of ncps they can collaborate with other scientists and uh, you know uh, and then sort of launch their research career uh, successfully and uh, but ncps will sort of like to invest as much as possible on young scientists then our regular assistant professor we don't have any specific age bar mm-hmm. uh, we accomplished scientists can join however when you want to hire an, as a as a fellow and a non faculty fellow uh, we prefer to sort of invest among the younger people mm-hmm. so and what is the generic process for these fellows to get integrated into the ncbs system as a permanent faculty member it's the same like any other places through an evaluation so based on the kind of work they do kind of outcome they have and how they can contribute to ncbs ecosystem what kind of gap they will fill in mm-hmm. all those things will be considered there is that thing really sort of keeps anybody away from joining ncbs mm-hmm. but the process of selection is it sort of looks at their accomplishment at the same time more importantly the future research they want to do should match our vision mm-hmm. so there is there seems to be no doubt about the uh, scope of research opportunities at ncbs uh, what kind of teaching opportunities exist at uh, ncbs yeah so ncbs is primarily a research institution we do have uh, one masters program called uh, wildlife biology program those who are teaching who want to teach genetics evolution ecology biodiversity they can be part of that course and we do have integrated phd program where the students have to do one masters before they you know enter into phd but that is a one year masters so there is opportunity to teach those students and any specific course of their faculty is interest however compared to iascs or any university the teaching at ncbs is much much less mm-hmm. so it is not necessarily a requirement for a candidate but we do of course you know because you know finally communication is our teaching is not only about classroom teaching mm-hmm. so our faculty will have to teach their own phd mm-hmm. how you communicate you know your work your ideas is also very important and also students may come without necessary background mm-hmm. the faculty have to teach their students mm-hmm. the background of their work mm-hmm. so they to have some you know deep understanding of the history of their field Mm-hmm. and methodology that has evolved over time in in the research they do and without that understanding and their ability to teach they not be able to mentor these students well mm-hmm. so we do look at those qualities too mm-hmm. so you already kind of mentioned ncbs being part of the bangalore life sciences cluster um, so i guess there is obviously a lot of scope for collaborations within uh, these campuses Uh, could you throw some more light on that and maybe also like if there are any existing collaborations outside of the bangalore yeah. life sciences sure. cluster so the bangalore life sciences cluster as i mentioned is made up is one campus four research institutions two government and two non government and uh, we work like one institute we all the facilities are shared and then 
you know the catering facility the house uh, keeping fest you know service or uh, daycare facility for children of uh, of our staff and and cattle and uh, you know all the sports facility everything is shared and uh, phd students can sort of use any facilities across the campus and and all the seminars and everything is jointly held so the timing and schedule is such that no two seminars overlap with respect to which institution it is you know being uh, held and conferences are managed jointly so given that we work like a one common research institution with diverse research that's happening on campus and collaboration wise of course all faculty collaborate faculty within ncbs faculty between ncbs in stem or ncbs in tics they collaborate then many of the incubators uh, and mentees of ccam mm-hmm. they have benefit because of the expertise that is present in ncbs outside of course there is large collaboration happens amongst our ecology and biodiversity faculty which is natural given the fact that they need to work outside the field and they are more interdisciplinary at the same time many of our uh, uh, other faculty too do collaborate both nationally and internationally so it, no faculty is uh, is working in silos most every faculty has one or two collaborations mm-hmm. nationally and internationally that's great to hear so uh, nowadays it is also a growing trend for like a lot of phd and postdocs uh, to look for um, non traditional careers like instead of like just academic research so are there any kind of like uh, such employment opportunities apart from the traditional uh, academic professor uh, positions at uh, ncbs yeah we are actively looking for uh, people who can manage our grants or uh, science communication science writing right science writing is not both for learned audience as well as for general public <laughs> because we need to write our reports to other you know academic people so that easy to collaborate or you know collaboration happens at the institutional level between two institutions within in within india or india and abroad so they are looking for some specific technical details mm-hmm. on projects that we do and also philanthropy funding comes when we write very succinctly which is understandable to general public so we are looking for you know professionals who can write the the research that goes on in ncbs for very different audiences through you know reports or proposals or through our website social media and so forth we are looking for people who can you know manage our grants and also we are looking for program managers here program management is something you know new to india but it's very common elsewhere in the world if three labs collaborate or three institutions collaborate right you need a couple of program managers who are who have a deep knowledge of the domain area in which research is happening but they themselves do not do research but they are continuously connecting all the collaborators mm-hmm. so that there is a flow of information and flow of samples or any reagents or data happens without any delay and it happens very effectively so that increases the value of the collaboration so we are looking for alternate uh, career you know mm-hmm. scientists to in, in ncbs that's that's great to hear so uh, this there's been a lot of informative talk about ncbs Uh, do you have any final parting advice for future applicants for ncbs or even the general researcher community that is interested in coming back to india so india is a land of opportunities i mean of course us is still considered as land of opportunities and uh, <laughs> but india has fast becoming a land of opportunities it is extremely as you all know it's a very large country of 1.5 billion people but with same number of problems and uh, science and technologies is the is the primary source of idea for solving societal problems when you take societal problems it is not necessarily very specific scientific uh, discoveries leading to making products even to solve some of the you know the societal problem like water management you know so, you know sustainable agriculture agroforestry where multidisciplinarity is required you need biologists you need data scientists you need social scientists economists to come together 
and work. So that opportunity is also increasing in India. And there are there are special schemes and projects and funding available now for people from different disciplines to work together to solve real life problems. So there is a huge opportunity. And I request all of the people who are looking for jobs to explore India. Well, thanks a lot, Dr. Shashidara. This has been a great talk. Like I am thankful for the opportunity that you have given us uh, and sharing all the information about NCBS. Thank you once again. Thank you very much.